welcome to our double header Sunday. We have uh, both people here in person and streaming online. We want to say welcome as well to those who are streaming our eight o'clock service as we celebrate and fold the richness of all our varied worship traditions here at Resurrection this Sunday. And we're continuing our Lenten series called Rend, our, Rend Your Hearts, Claiming the Promises. And today we're looking at the Ten Commandments. And uh, we might be thinking that's more of a rending ser uh, service because we're looking at laws there, but we're actually going to see there's some promises embedded in them as well. So want to uh, encourage everyone to uh, stay tuned for that. And for everyone watching online, just be active and interactive uh, throughout service here. Say hi to one another right now. And if you have any prayer requests, you can type those in. We'll make sure to pray for those uh, if we catch them before prayer time during that or also during the week, we'll pray for them as well. So wanted to share that. Also wanted to share that next Sunday we uh, have our uh, spring forward with uh, the daylight savings time. So make sure you uh, adjust your clocks appropriately on uh, Saturday night uh, so that you can make sure you're here on time. And we're going back to one service at 10 a.m. next week. So. Uh, so just to remind everyone of those two changes there. And next week, we'll actually be looking at God's continued promises, uh, especially in troubled times. We know that there's a lot of troubling times we've been enduring. Where do we look up and how do we live in those times? And we'll see how the Israelites did it, and we'll see how God gives us his light and what signs he gives for us uh, in our lives today. So next week at 10 a.m. with Daylight Savings, we look forward to seeing you. Also wanted to share that this coming week on Wednesday, we have Zoom Bible study at either 10 a.m. or 7 p.m. And we'll be looking at uh, what we're covering today in a little more detail, so the Ten Commandments and uh, what they mean for our lives today. So 10 a.m. or 7 p.m., you can join us uh, for that. Also wanted to share that we're continuing to collect uh, for Easter flower donations for the next, uh, today and the next two weeks after that. So. Uh, if you do want to share for that, there's some envelopes that say Easter donation. You can put a check in if you're here, or you can mail it in with Easter flower donations in the memo line. We'll make sure it gets to the right uh, pot. Also wanted to uh, share that uh, if you're looking for an opportunity to get outside and, uh, and do an activity together with everything that's been going on, uh, there is an opportunity for landscaping our uh, beautiful grounds here on this coming Saturday at 9 a.m. So wanted to uh, share that. Uh, and also one that I skipped over, uh, I wanna go back to, is that Cardstock 2 is here. And so we are uh, looking at getting cards together for people for, especially Wesley Homes who can't do this uh, very well on their own and just need some support and encouragement. Um, so we'll have cards, blank cards out in the lobby. And also if you wanna donate cards for people, we'll have those in a basket or, or a basket out for those blank cards. And it's really interesting, just quickly, I saw a article uh, this past week that the Canadian post office is actually uh, sending out blank uh, prepaid uh, postage uh, cards for people to mail to one another. So they're uh, doing that as a whole postal service. So it's not uh, something that uh, is done a lot, but even whole countries are seeing there's a great need for reaching out like this. I wanted to share that. And then, like I said, of course, we have the landscape. Uh, party this Saturday at 9 a.m. So a chance to uh, get outside and uh, get your hands dirty and, uh, and uh, just enjoy some time together since we've been apart for so long. And then finally, just wanted to share uh, already as we're only about a month away, the Holy Week schedule. So we'll be doing one uh, Holy Week service. That's going to be our Good Friday service with elements of Monday, Thursday sprinkled in. And that'll be April 2nd at 7 p.m. And then we'll be doing another uh, double header two service Sunday on Easter Sunday at 8 or 10 a, 1030 a.m. like our normal times are. So uh, make sure to reserve your spot for those because uh, we still have the restrictive uh, uh, amounts right now. I don't know if that'll change between now and then, but just uh, make sure to get your spot for that on the earlier side. So I wanted to share that. So with that said, that's everything I have. So let's stand up this morning. And let us worship our Lord and how firm a foundation he is. So let's rise and sing how firm a foundation.
and held in the arms of love and the arms of God, we worship this morning in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And Lord, we acknowledge you, O Father God, as creator and liberator. You are the one who brought the captives out of Egypt and delivered them from the oppression of slavery. You gave laws which shaped how people were to relate to you, to each other, and to the whole environment. You implored people to worship only you, knowing that what was ever put in your place would become the object of idolatry, would become the priority of people's lives. In this time of worship, help us to focus on you, O oh God, as the priority of our lives. Remind us of your steadfast love revealed so clearly in the new commandment of love, which your son, Jesus, disclosed with his life. And especially as we remember in this period of Lent with his death. Speak to us anew as we offer this prayer in our worship in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. And there are times that we fail in giving our lives over to him, like we mentioned with the first commandment, we fall into idolatry and all the other commandments that we break. And so we have to confess those times before the Lord, and so we do that now. O commandment giver, you gave us the covenant of the law to guide us and help us live with our neighbors in love. When we break God's law, we leave our neighbors hurt and bruised. So please forgive us for the times we break your laws towards others. God's law is a gift to us, showing us how to keep our part of the covenant. But when we sin against you, we break it. Please forgive us for all the times we don't honor your instruction to love you with our lives. Even through old pain and wounds, may we embrace the new life that Christ can bring. Amen. So we now take a few moments of silence to give over to the Lord those places where we have broken the commands, his instructions. So as we've given these up over to the Lord, may the God, the Father of the Torah, guide us in living lives that keep the covenant of love. May Christ's love and grace grant us new life, even when we break God's law. May the Holy Spirit of conviction lead us to confession and renewal. May we respond in love to all of God's covenant and change. Having done all this, rejoice. Rejoice for all your sins are forgiven in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. And now if you are standing, you may be seated as we have our Old Testament lesson for today. Our first reading is from Exodus 20, 1 through 17. And God spoke all these words. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make yourself an image in the form of anything in heaven above or on the earth beneath or in the waters below. You shall not bow To them or worship them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing the children for the sin of the parents to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me, but showing love to a thousand generations of those who love me and keep my commandments. For you shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not hold anyone guiltless who misuses his name. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is the, is the Sabbath to the Lord your God. 
On it you shall not do any work, neither you nor your son or your daughter, nor your male or female servant, nor your animals, nor any foreign foreigner residing in your towns. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea and all that is in them, but he rested on the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. Honor your father and your mother so that you may live long in the land the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not give false testimony against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house, you shall not covet your neighbor's wife or his male or female servant, his ox or donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And let us now rise as we have our gospel lesson for today. And our gospel lesson for this morning comes from the book of John, chapter 2, verses 13 through 22. When it was almost time for the Jewish Passover, Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple courts, he found people selling cattle, sheep, and doves, and others sitting at tables exchanging money. So he made a whip out of cords and drove them all from the temple courts, both sheep and cattle. He scattered the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. To those who sold doves, he said, Get these out of here. Stop turning my father's house into a market. His disciples remembered that it is written, Zeal for your house will consume me. The Jews then responded to him, What sign can you show us to prove your authority to do all this? Jesus answered them, destroy this temple and in three, and I will raise it again in three days. They replied, it has taken 46 years to build this temple and you are going to raise it in three days? But the disciple, the temple he had spoken of was his body. After he was raised from the dead, his disciples recalled what he had said. They believed, then they believed the scriptures and the words that Jesus had spoken. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. And at this time we now confess as we remember the scriptures and the words Jesus spoke, and not only that, but what the whole triune God is for us. So we do that as we confess the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And you now may be seated as we continue to worship with our sermon hymn.
let's start with a word of prayer. We thank you that you are our hope's foundation, that you speak words of truth, of instruction, of grace to us. Thank you for being our glory and our salvation. May we take this time to focus on you and you alone. May you remove any temptation or distraction that would try to come up against us in this place or in our homes. May we just focus on you and your word alone. In your name we pray. Amen. Every day we go into life with expectations about how things will occur. These beliefs have an astounding impact on our perceptions of and reactions to the world around us, oftentimes without us being aware. And what I just read there is actually a definition of what it means to have a preconceived notion. And we run into examples of preconceived notions in our lives all the time. A powerful, timely example of this in our current culture that seems so divided is social media postings. When someone posts something on a controversial topic with a certain viewpoint, we often jump to a conclusion about that person, about who they are, what they believe, how we should treat them if we meet them in person, and very often the conclusions we have aren't good ones. The reason I start by talking about preconceived notions today is that when you heard that today's topic was about the Ten Commandments, I'm sure you had some preconceived notions about what this message would sound like. And you might not have even been aware of them. As you think about our sermon series and the title of it, Rend Your Heart Claiming the Promise, it's easy to have a preconceived notion that this message will be more about rending our hearts because of the commandments and laws than it is about claiming a promise. And many people have those type of preconceived notions about the Ten Commandments, don't they? That they're just laws that restrict uh, all the fun stuff, right? You might have a preconceived notion that I'm going to start by talking about the First Commandment talking about idolatry and having no other gods. And while this is very true, if you look at verses 1 and 2 before we even get to the commands, you see there's actually a reminder, there is a promise there, that it isn't just laws to follow. So I'm not going to actually start with the first commandment. I'm going to go back and reread verses 1 and 2 that Jerry read again, because likely because of our preconceived notions, we didn't really engage in listening until the commands started. It's easy to treat these first two verses like they're uh, a garnish of parsley on the dish and that we're uh, getting to the main meal, but we have to get the parsley out of the way first. But they really set the table for all that is to follow. So we read... And God spoke all these words. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. What amazing words of promise these are. This is a promise of God that he has brought the Israelites out of bondage, out of the slavery that had consumed them and that they no longer belong to the Egyptians, but they belong to him. It's a promise that he will be their God, that he will continue to protect them. This verse is a reminder about who they are, and these words are similar to ones that we hear in our baptisms. Receive the sign of the Holy Cross as a sign that Christ the crucified has redeemed you. It is a promise of God to redeem us, to forgive our sins. It's a promise of ending confinement of slavery to sin and bringing freedom for people. These verses are important because they give context to these words that follow. Yahweh, 
who has freed the nation of Israel gives them not a painful sign, but all these words, these instructions on how to live. Now I say the word instruction because when we hear the word law, or as we'd say in the Hebrew, Torah, you might think of it just as law, but uh, this gives us some preconceived notions about it. A better word to uh, translate is actually instruction. Because law makes it sound like these words are only restrictive ones. But really, if you look at these words being ones from the one true God, from Yahweh who freed his people, then these really are words of liberty. These are words of instructions, of, of do and don't. And they have a positive intent, and here's how. Think about the context once again. Yahweh has just liberated them from terrible bondage. And here he tells them how to avoid falling back into bondage again. How to enjoy their liberty. Just think, after all those years of slavery, they might have gone out into the wilderness and simply just imitated the lifestyle of the Egyptians who had been their masters for so long. Because that was all they knew. Or they might have gone to the promised land eventually and fallen into the customs of the peoples who lived there, which sadly, ultimately, they did and found themselves in bondage again. Before that, though, to keep them, help them maintain a liberated life, God gives them this simple set of instructions, the law of liberty, as James would say in chapter 125. Here is a good God, the father of a new family, trying to help them learn to walk in a safe and healthy way. And the original setting of the Ten Commandments reminds us that our covenant relationship with the same God is not simply holding hands and skipping along like we're frolicking through the park. Yes, we are saved by grace, and we're sustained by grace. But to enjoy that grace, we must live a life that God outlines here. As Paul said in a different context, it is for freedom. It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm, then. It talks about the way you live. Stand firm, then, and do not let yourselves be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. Liberty, then, is not lawless living. These instructions help guard our liberated living. And going back to the very first verse, and God spoke all, all these words, all of these words that cover all of life. Their covenant Lord lays a comprehensive claim on their lives. As the footnotes to my study Bible puts it, as his subjects, his covenant people are to render complete submission, allegiance, and obedience to him out of gratitude for his mercies, revealed for his sovereignty and trust in his continuing care. Yahweh lays this comprehensive claim on them, all these words, all of life, not as a hard-hearted, heavy-handed tyrant, but as a loving father who would do anything to save his people. As he so powerfully illustrated centuries later when he gave his only begotten son to save a sinful world. As we shed away the preconceived notions about all of these words, it allows us to ask questions that are more in-depth. What do all these words have to do with the kingdom of God as Jesus describes it? What do all these words have to do with loving our neighbor and living in community both here and now? And a great example of this is to look at something like the fifth commandment. You shall not murder. You shall not murder. And that might look straightforward. It might look like if we assess our lives that we haven't broken it lately towards God or our neighbors. 
But let's dig into it a little bit more. And I want to do that, I want to start by giving Luther's explanation of it from the small catechism and then ask some questions. So you shall not murder. What does this mean? Answer. We should fear and love God so that we not hurt or harm our neighbor and his body, but helps and support him in every physical need. With this exclamation in mind, we should then ask some questions, and we have them up on the screen. Have I hurt or harmed my neighbor and his body? Maybe the answer to that is no, but there's, there's more to that than that, and, and Jesus reminds us that because if we hold anger in our hearts, then we've done that. Do we hate anyone, or am I angry with anyone? I think most of us could answer that and say, yes, I have. Have I lost my temper or injured my neighbor by thoughts, words, or deeds? Am I abusive in word or deed toward my spouse, children, or anyone else? Have I neglected to help and support my neighbor in every physical need? And you see, it's actually pretty easy when we start asking these questions, if we're willing to ask ourselves these simple questions on every commandment like this, we see what we have to rend the most in order to follow Jesus, how quickly we do break them all every day. And focusing then on uh, those around us, so we see how it impacts the relationship with God, but also using the example of those around us, how do I serve my neighbor in this commandment? Well, for one, we don't kill them. That's pretty simple. But what else? What else should we do to serve our neighbor? And here it's useful to look at the but in Luther's explanation. But help and befriend him in every necessity of life. Help and support him in every physical need. So this gives us instruction, and we see that this is truly lived out in our Savior, who helps and befriends us in every necessity of life claims us as his own, gives us forgiveness of sins, and sets us free so we can serve others. We don't need to look at ourselves to find salvation in our good works. Instead, we can look to Jesus to be set free from those bonds of slavery just so we can ask, how can I serve others? And in this way, we can keep the commandments as we serve him and others. And so I would really encourage you this week to look at the small catechism, and I'll send a version to the uh, online uh, version of it through CPH this week. And as you look at it and read through the, uh, the explanation of the Ten Commandments, look for all the different uh, areas where uh, Luther writes but and then gives some uh, instruction on how to do things. And it will tell you the good deeds that God wants you to do. And there's some examples of it on the screen, and I can send these out with the email as well uh, so you can read through them. Uh, and there's some really good ones there to think about in the commandments that follow them, how to actually live those out. In the fifth commandment, it's to care for others, that anyone we come across in our daily lives, that we would support them in their bodies. It might be a family member who's considered a neighbor. It might be a literal neighbor who lives in the house next door. Or it might be someone whose name you've never even known. But if you see them in need and can do something, God calls for you to support them in this commandment. And we can do this because Jesus has supported us and given his life for us. Contrary to the preconceived notions of just being good people. We don't trust our following the instructions of all these words to save us. We trust in Jesus to save us. Jesus, the Christ who was killed as he promised in today's gospel, but also as he promised that temple would rise up on the third day. We trust Jesus to save us from our many sins because he did take up his cross and die for us. And now that cross gives us new resurrection life and has the power to save us. If you were to read on in Exodus 20, beyond where Jerry read, you'd see that the people had 
finished hearing all these things and their response was fear. And it's easy for us to do that as well, always worrying if we're going to fail in following these and have an unhealthy fear of the Lord who gives these commands. But, there's that word again, but, when Jesus comes, he rips through all of those preconceived notions and gives a different orientation of Yahweh's instruction. It's we read in John 14, 15. If you love me, if you love me, keep my commandments. And here we see what the true driving force is behind them. It is not fear. It's love. Here is our loving Lord calling us to live in love. A love outlined in clear, strong commands, instructions. His intention is not to restrict our lives, but to help us live truly abundant lives as we read in John 10.10. 10. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. So let us drop all preconceived notions about these words and promises and let us rather live them all out in the full, abundant life of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Let's do this as we love him and love our neighbors through the liberty of all these words. And let's make that our prayer as we go forth in service. Merciful God, give us strength and courage to keep your instructions, to live in faithful obedience to your will. Guard our hearts and minds from all that might distract us from living out our commitment to you this week. Help us to find our true worth in knowing you more fully and serving you more faithfully as we follow all these words in the name of Jesus Christ, our cornerstone. And all God's people said, Amen. And we'll now have some time of instrumental music to reflect on today's message and words. And I just want to thank everyone who's here in person, also those watching online. Thank you so much for your continued support of Resurrection through, uh, first off, your prayers and your words of encouragement and support. Uh, those mean more than anything, but also your uh, tithes and offerings are such a gracious offering and gift to the ministry of resurrection. You can continue to give those through uh, mailing or through online giving. Thank you so much for that. And now let us just take time to meditate on all these words. God's blessings to you. Let us now rise and lift our prayers to the Lord or come in whatever posture prayer is best for us. And for those watching online, you can type out your prayers at this time, uh, and we'll pray over them during the week. Uh, so just anything that's on your heart, you can lift up now as well. Know that God hears our prayers, whether we're in this room or in our houses. Our God is God of all in all places. And so let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. And we praise you, Lord, for your faithful love toward us and the many ways you have demonstrated that love to us. We see your love in the gift of your commandments, the rules for living that guide us into a right relationship with you and with the people around us. 
And we see your love in Jesus Christ who lived and died to bring us life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we thank you for this world you created and the opportunities we have to enjoy its beauty and its life-sustaining promise. When we find occasions to breathe in fresh air and exercise outdoors in this end of winter, remind us of our partnership with you to care for creation. As spring comes closer and the sun shines longer each day, reawaken our hope in your promise of new life to sustain us as the weeks of the pandemic stretch on. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we thank you for walking with us through days of uncertainty, as well as times of pleasure and satisfaction. In times of risk and stress, you still provide a still point of calm. In times of challenge, you are the source of courage and confidence for us. Thank you for hearing us when we pray and for the wisdom and encouragement we receive from you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we are so thankful for all the different ways we can worship you, whether it's with organ, guitar, piano, or drums. May we always keep our focus on you and your gospel hope during worship and set the things of self aside. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Lord, we lift up to you all those who do not know your words of instruction, or those who see them as burdens and have not experienced the new life that comes from knowing Christ Jesus. May they continue to search for purpose and meaning, and may we get chances to share your words with them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray for, for those whose lives are surrounded by violence, whether from war or political unrest, crime or domestic abuse. We pray for all those who have been victims of violent crime and for those whose loved ones have been injured or murdered, that your comfort, healing, and peace would surround them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In Lord God, Heavenly Father, you have commanded us to have no other gods. Keep us faithful to you alone and dethrone the idols in our lives. Furthermore, build respect among all people for the world and life you create. Let us do nothing to hurt or harm our neighbor in any way but move us to help in times of need. And finally, prevent us from doing anything to damage our neighbor's reputation. Make us more ready to forgive than to judge and keep us from angry outbursts and malicious talk. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Lord, we lift up Janae the mother of baby Jackie, who passed into the arms of Jesus shortly after her birth. Comfort Millie Lott's whole family as they mourn the loss of this precious child. Be present with them in grief, and may they place their hope in the promise of your resurrection. May they lean on the everlasting, comforting arms of Jesus Christ, the same arms that hold little Jackie right now. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Lord, we do pray for all those who are enduring pain and illness, those who are facing grief and loss, and those who work on the front lines in our community in healthcare, education, retail, and emergency and public service. So many are exhausted by these months of pandemic be their comfort and encouragement day by day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And now whether home or here in person, take this time now to lift up your prayers to the Lord. Lord, 
hear our prayer. Lord, we lift up all these prayers, unspoken and unspoken, whether in our sanctuary or in our homes. We lift them all into your hands, O Lord. We commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And we are now bold to pray as the Lord taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever, amen. And as we enter into a time of preparing for communion, let us sing out how we seek ye first the kingdom of God. At this time, we may take our mask down to receive the Holy Lord's Supper. And our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, on the night that he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. And so take and eat the body of Christ, which is given for you. And in the same way, after the supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Take and drink it, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. So take and drink the blood of Christ, which is shed for you. And now can receive the true body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Go strengthen this day to life everlasting in the one true faith. Depart in peace and joy as you live out all these words. And as you go from this place, strengthened in claiming the promises of the Lord, may the same Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. And let us now sing out, Savior again, to thy dear name we raise.
go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God, and have a blessed week, everyone.